Good day, dear ladies and gentlemen. I am glad to welcome you to my channel. This cryptocurrency has firmly entered our lives and we know the final outcome. Are you ready to make a profit or sit on the sidelines? It all depends on you. Only you are the leader of your life and the main future is in your hands. Recently, the XRP community has been divided into lines of those who believe in the theory and those who do not. The theory in question is whether XRP will reach $589 before the end of the year or even $10,000 a day. Is this really possible for the Ripple token? According to the XRP community, first of all, the $589 theory has three possibilities of occurrence. The first and most widely discussed method is that the launch of Zrapid will push up the price of the coin due to the huge increase in trading volume. Secondly, an increase in the price of XRP, since commissions in this trading volume will determine the price. There are also proponents who believe that 58.9 is the atomic mass of cobalt, which is the name of an upgrade designed to increase the speed of XRP. The most likely of these three is that the launch of Zrapid will push the price of XRP to $589. Zrapid is Ripple's fastest product to date for cross-border transactions and uses XRP as an intermediate currency for transferring between borders. This means that any volume received as a result of cross-border payments will be directly transferred as trading volume for XRP, since the XRP required for the transaction will be bought and sold on exchanges on the sending and receiving side of the money transfer, respectively. The Working Money channel on YouTube broke the economics of what would happen if Zrapid launched the next day. He calculated the average daily fluctuations of XRP and the average daily volume of the coin, which amounted to 7.25% and $191 million, respectively. He then went on to hypothesize what the price of XRP would be if Ripple captured 1%, 5%, 10% and 100% of SWIFT's existing market share. SWIFT processes approximately $4.7 trillion every business day. If Zrapid took 1% of this business, the daily volume of Zrapid would reach $47.8 billion. Taking into account that this is more than 250 times the average trading volume of XRP, it represents a fluctuation within 1,816% by extrapolation, which represents a price of $5.56. Similarly, the price of XRP for 5% of SWIFT's volume will be $26.62, since the trading volume is about $239 billion. 10% of SWIFT's volume would amount to an XRP price equal to $55.6. In general, I will say this, XRP was designed for $10,000. When XRP was created, it was designed to replace both institutional and retail financial systems in all markets around the world. How do we know that? Studying how XRP works makes this obvious. A somewhat famous quote from Ripple Labs co-founder Arthur Brito gives a tantalizing clue. In 2017, he wrote, XRP needs to be scalable to accommodate 7.5 billion people. We will return to this quote, but it gives an idea of the scale of Ripple's ambitions that will be used by the population of the whole world. First, let's look at some of the main features of XRP that support my claim that it was designed to have a value of $10,000 or, to be more precise, $11,400. With Liquid Sidechain, users can use Liquid BTC Andreas Anton Apollost, author of the book Mastering Bitcoin, and a well-known Bitcoin supporter, spoke about the Blockstream Liquid Sidechain the first Bitcoin production sidechain, during a question and answer session on YouTube. Here, the author also talked about whether there is any competition between Bitcoin liquid sidechain and XRP Ripple regarding the use case. Anton Apollos began by talking about the liquid sidechain, in which he stated that the product was developed by Blockstream, a well-known Bitcoin company that has participated in numerous Bitcoin-related projects. The initial discussion of Bitcoin Liquid Sidechain Solution began in 2015. Here, a sidechain is understood as a separate chain of blocks that is connected to the main chain through a two-way binding, a mechanism that allows assets to be activated at a given speed. 
Andreas explained the side chain as, you can move a value from the Bitcoin chain to this other blockchain, use it there for some purpose, and then move it back. Sidechain presents a concept in which the user of the main chain has to send coins to an output address, which is then blocked, so that the user cannot use it for other purposes. This is followed by a confirmation that is passed down the chain after the initial transaction is completed. After that, the same amount of coins will be issued on the side chain, which can later be used by the user. The same concept applies when coins are transferred from the main chain to the side chain. Ripple is actively developing, entering into many new agreements with banks and companies. All this will give us advantages. After all, the development in success does not stand still. Everything is going towards it. XRP is a cryptocurrency by the startup Ripple, which has cemented its place in the top 5 most capitalized digital assets. You can find a lot of offers to sell the coin online, but not all of them are profitable. At some sites, an attractive rate hides additional commissions, while others have unfeasible conditions for withdrawing the cryptocurrency. A popular option for those wishing to buy XRP is the Stormgain Exchange. The platform is focused on anonymous work. To buy cryptocurrency, all you need to do is register with an email address and confirming your phone number. Anonymity is especially relevant for all countries. Regulators are actively erecting legal frameworks and taking an interest in the revenues of participants in the cryptocurrency community. The ability to maintain confidentiality is an important component of security when working with digital assets. On Stormgain, you can buy XRP from a Visa or MasterCard bank card via Coinal and Simplex payment systems. The fees will be 4% and 5% of the purchase amount are going to do about it. I have 50,000 XRP coins so far. I am a novice investor, but I know and understand this market. Ripple is actively developing, entering into many new agreements with banks and companies. All this will give us advantages. After all, the development in success does not stand still. Everything is going towards it. XRP is a cryptocurrency by the startup Ripple, which has cemented its place in the top 5 most capitalized digital assets. You can find a lot of offers to sell the coin online, but not all of them are profitable. At some sites, an attractive rate hides additional commissions, while others have unfeasible conditions for withdrawing the cryptocurrency. A popular option for those wishing to buy XRP is the Stormgain Exchange. The platform is focused on anonymous work. To buy cryptocurrency, all you need to do is register with an email address and confirming your phone number. Anonymity is especially relevant for all countries. Regulators are actively erecting legal frameworks and taking an interest in the revenues of participants in the cryptocurrency community. The ability to maintain confidentiality is an important component of security when working with digital assets. On Stormgain, you can buy XRP from a Visa or MasterCard bank card via Coinal and Simplex payment systems. The fees will be 4% and 5% of the purchase amount are going to do about it. I have 50,000 XRP coins so far. I am a novice investor, but I know and understand this mark. Hi all ladies and gentlemen. Today we will talk about XRP, a cryptocurrency that has been bugging no one until now. What will happen next? I have prepared for you some documents with information which for sure will be useful for you. Because thanks to it, you can understand in what direction to move. And before we begin, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel, because it will be useful to you in the future quality news information that will not let you fall below the level that is now. Well, now let's go. It is now. Well, Ripple CEO is optimistic the crypto firm will get ruling on XRP lawsuit soon, slams embarrassing SEC. Indeed, the SEC case has already dragged on for as long as one can imagine. The denouement, however, will not come soon enough. Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of crypto company Ripple, said he is optimistic that a ruling on its legal dispute with the Securities and Exchange Commission will be reached in 2023 potentially in the first half of this year. The lawsuit relates to whether XRP should be treated as a security has important implications for both Ripple and the broader crypto market. Garlinghouse sternly rebuked the sex legal battle with his firm Wednesday, saying the conduct of the agency so far had been embarrassing. The head of cryptocurrency and blockchain company Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse says he is hopeful a resolution will be reached in its spat with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission within the first half of 2023. 
judges take however long the judges will take, Garlinghouse, who is a defendant in the legal drama, said in an interview with CNBC's Squawk Box Europe Wednesday at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. We are optimistic that this will certainly be resolved in 2023 and maybe in the first half. So we'll see how it plays out from here. But I feel very good about where we are relative to the law and the facts. The US. Securities and Exchange Commission initiated a lawsuit against Ripple in 2020, alleging that the company and its executives illegally sold XRP a cryptocurrency created in 2012 to investors without first registering it as a security. Ripple disputes the claim, saying that the token should not be considered an investment contract and is used in its business to facilitate cross-border transactions between banks and other financial institutions. In December, Ripple and the SEC submitted their final round of briefs seeking a summary judgment to the case, respectively accusing each other of stretching the law. The judge could make a ruling in favor of either side, avoiding a trial, or put the matter before a jury. Garlinghouse said that he expects a ruling to arrive sometime in the coming single-digit months, potentially as soon as June. He added that he doesn't expect the company will settle the case, although he remains open to the prospect. We have always said that we would love to settle, but it requires one very important thing, and that is that, on a go-forward basis, it's clear that XRP is not a security, Garlinghouse said. The sect and Gary Gensler has very outwardly said he views almost all crypto as a security. And so that leaves very little space in the Venn diagram for settlement. At a September event organized by the Practicing Law Institute, Gensler said that the vast majority of cryptocurrency tokens are securities. He subsequently hinted that Ether may also qualify as a security. Without referring to its by name, Gensler told reporters in September that crypto staking mechanisms, which reward users who deposit their tokens to secure blockchain networks with interest-like payments, should count as securities offerings, since the investing public is anticipating profits based on the efforts of others. Ethereum, the network behind the world's second-largest cryptocurrency, switched to such a model last year. The only cryptocurrency that the agency has made clear it doesn't view as a security as Bitcoin. Gensler previously stated that the world's biggest cryptocurrency has no group of individuals in the middle, meaning investors aren't betting on an intermediary. The XRP case has important implications for both Ripple and the broader crypto market. A judgment pronouncing XRP a security could potentially impose much stricter curbs on Ripple with respect to the token. This could include requirements for transparency disclosures and greater investor protections, akin to those imposed on regulated broker-dealers. It may also set a precedent for dozens of other crypto and blockchain projects that could potentially be classified as securities. Stressing the significance of the lawsuit's outcome, Garlinghouse said on Wednesday, something I've heard here in Davos repeatedly is how important this is not just to Ripple, but also, really, the whole crypto industry in the United States. He added, I keep reminding people that outside the United States, crypto is still thriving, Ripple's still thriving, and we should make sure we're continuing to engage non-US regulators as well. Embarrassing behavior in a separate fireside discussion with CNBC's Arjun Karpal Wednesday, Garlinghouse issued a stern rebuke of the sex legal battle with his firm, saying the conduct of the watchdog so far had been embarrassing. From the beginning, I thought it was very clear that the facts were on our side, that the law was on our side, he said. And I think as you have seen this play out, as you have seen the filings in the court, that the judge certainly is hearing our arguments. He went on, the sex behavior in some of it has been embarrassing as a US citizen. Just some of the things that have been happening, like you've got to be kidding. He said the US is notably absent from the list of regulators developing crypto-friendly rules. The United Arab Emirates Japan, Singapore Switzerland and UK are some of the forerunners in this respect, in his view. As part of the legal proceedings, Ripple for to obtain documents related to a June 2018 speech from former SEC official Bill Hinman, which it says, have aided the case. In the speech, Hinman says that sales of rival Ether are not securities transactions. XRP was once the third largest cryptocurrency commanding a $120 billion market value in early 2018. It has dropped sharply since, amid U.S. regulatory scrutiny and a wider downturn in Bitcoin and other digital currencies. XRP now has a market capitalization of roughly $20 billion, according to CanMarketCap data.
It was interesting enough information, but that's not all we need. What do you think? Write in the comments. Such big money. Look what we have here. It's time to get to grips with this desolators. SEC charges Ripple and two executives with conducting $1.3 billion unregistered securities offering. Washington, D.C., December 22, 2020, the Securities and Exchange Commission announced today that it has filed an action against Ripple Labs Inc. and two of its executives, who are also significant security holders, alleging that they raised over $1.3 billion through an unregistered, ongoing digital asset securities offering. According to the SEC's complaint, Ripple, Christian Larson, the company's co-founder, executive chairman of its board, and former CEO, and Bradley Garlinghouse, the company's current CEO, raised capital to finance the company's business. The complaint alleges that Ripple raised funds, beginning in 2013, through the sale of digital assets known as XRP and an unregistered securities offering to investors in the US and worldwide. Ripple also allegedly distributed billions of XRP in exchange for non-cash consideration, such as labor and market-making services. According to the complaint, in addition to structuring and promoting the XRP sales used to finance the company's business, Larson and Garlinghouse also effected personal unregistered sales of XRP totaling approximately $600 million. The complaint alleges that the defendants failed to register their offers and sales of XRP or satisfy any exemption from registration in violation of the registration provisions of the federal securities laws. Issuers seeking the benefits of a public offering, including access to retail investors, broad distribution and a secondary trading market, must comply with the federal securities laws that require registration of offerings unless an exemption from registration applies, said Stephanie Avakian director of the Sex Enforcement Division. We allege that Ripple, Larson, and Garlinghouse failed to register their ongoing offer and sale of billions of XRP to retail investors, which deprived potential purchasers of adequate disclosures about XRP and Ripple's business and other important long-standing protections that are fundamental to our robust public market system. The registration requirements are designed to ensure that potential investors, including, importantly, retail investors, receive important information about an issuer's business operations and financial condition, said Mark P. Berger, deputy director of the Sex Enforcement Division. Here, we allege that Ripple and its executives failed over a period of years to satisfy these core investor protection provisions, and as a result investors lacked information to which they were entitled. The sex complaint filed today in Federal District Court in Manhattan, charges defendants with violating the registration provisions of the Securities Act of 1933 and seeks injunctive relief, disgorgement with pre-judgment interest, and civil penalties. The sex investigation was conducted by Daphne A. Waxman, John A. Daniels, and John Owen Wright of the Sex Cyber Unit. The case is being supervised by Christina Littman, chief of the Sex Enforcement Division's Cyber Unit. The sex litigation will be conducted by Jorge G. Tenrero, Dugan Bliss, Ms. Waxman, and Mr. Daniels, and supervised by Priyathi Krishnamurthy.